Okay, I want to do a video about testing a claim about a proportion. Um, just taking a sample question from online. Uh, let's run through all the parts and uh, check it out. So, if we read this real quick, in a 1997, uh, in 1997, a survey of 940 households showed that 163 of them use email. Use those sample results to test the claim that more than 15% of households use email. Use a 0.05 significance level. Use this information to answer the following questions. So one of the hardest parts about hypothesis testing uh, is figuring out what you're doing. Now, in this homework section, it's obvious because all the questions are about a proportion. Uh, but big clue here, you have uh, a total 940 households. 163 of them use email, so that's 163 of 940. So that's a proportion. A proportion is going to give you a percentage, uh, and so that's how you're definitely going to know. So, yeah, I don't care about that. So, what's this mean? Well, if you're using the uh, formula sheet that I uh, give out, uh, we're talking about being in that proportion column then. Uh, so we're going to churn through that proportion column uh, and uh, we're going to check all that stuff. Use the uh, help down in uh, go to the right parts down in stat crunch down below uh, and all that. Uh, so let's go back to that problem though. So there it is. Um, so what's our hypothesis test? What is the null hypothesis, etc, etc? Well, Let's see here, the claim is uh, more than 15%. More than means greater than, greater than 15%. Uh, and that does not have an equal, so greater than has to go in the alternative hypothesis. So we're talking either A, uh, actually A is the only one that, uh, A is the only one that has greater than 15% in that alternative. So we're going to go with A. And there it is. And so I'm actually going to do my work here though uh, as well. And so I'm going to come over here. Uh, my null is P. Now not P hat. P. P is the parameter. Uh, and my alternative is P is more than 15%. Now you can say uh, less than or equal to 15% uh, or you can also just write that as equals uh, depending on the book and preference but most of the time we, we like to think of um, our null as being just plain equals okay uh, let's move along here um, by the way this is the claim I also like to write that down now one of the things uh, this homework problem does not test is uh, or ask you to do is uh, test your conditions. You should always test your conditions because if the conditions fail, you can't do the test. So in this case, 940 households, 160 of three of them use email. So by the way, that means n is 940 x x is the number of successes because we're doing a proportion, sort of a binomial idea. Uh, what was that? It was uh, 163 of them. And therefore, by the way, that means p hat is x over n or 163 out of 940. And that is, by round, uh, 0.173. All right. Anyhow, checking those conditions, you should always check those. And if you're unsure, that formula sheet says it. Conditions, what conditions do we need to check? NP is greater than or equal to five, and N times one minus P is greater than or equal to five. Um, so there it is. And notice it says P, not P hat. So we're hypothesizing that P is this. So if I test NP, N was 940, 
P is hypothesized to be 15%, and that works out to be 141. And then N times 1 minus P would be 940 times 0.85, because P is 0.15, so 1 minus 0.15 is 0.85. And so clearly, we're going to be OK here. Both of these are far greater than 5, so my conditions are met. All right, so next, uh, if you were doing the distribution, uh, the standard error, uh, you could calculate that out. That would give you the standard error for your distribution. Uh, after that would be your test statistic. And so I'm a firm believer when you're doing your work, you should write out the formula. We're going to let StatCrunch calculate it for us, but let's write out the formula. And um, yeah, let's just keep current scheme there. Ignore that, please. Go away. And so there's our formula. And so it is p hat minus p over the square root. And just double check to make sure p times 1 minus p over n. Yep. We're not going to do that by hand, but I really like seeing that formula. Uh, on on paper because then you know if I was uh, grading this uh, then I know you know exactly what formula you're using what we're at and all that all right another thing though uh, before we move on um, this falls on a standard normal distribution so on a standard normal distribution zero would be here uh, roughly one standard deviation two standard deviations three negative one negative two negative three. Now before we even move on, uh, I would like to get the rejection region on here and get a better handle on that. Uh, just tie everything together. Uh, so remember alpha, alpha was 0.05 typically. I believe that's what it was in this scenario. Maybe, there we go. Uh, yes, use a 0.05 significance. All right, so alpha is 0.05 and a hint remember your alternative hypothesis always points to the side where their rejection region is so this is greater than greater than points to that side uh, so that's where the rejection region is going to be and so we would look look that up using alpha and the easiest way to do that is to use StatCrunch. and so actually I'm going to jump in here and go into StatCrunch. And the uh, mnemonic device is, uh, I'm looking up a critical value is what I'm really doing. A critical value is where does that rejection region start. And so with StatCrunch, I always like to say critical values can be found in the calculator. Now, what distribution are we in? We're in the Z, uh, Z distribution. Yeah, don't show that message again. There we go. And so that's the same thing as the normal. So critical values are found in the calculator. We're going to normal. And I want to find out where is 0.05. And by the way, I want to be on that side. So that starts at roughly 1.645. So if I jump back to here, that's where my critical value is. And this is my rejection region. So if I calculate this test statistic, if I fall over there, that's the rejection region. That's going to tell me to reject the null hypothesis. All right, let's jump into StatCrunch and do this. So again, if you don't remember where to go, use the formula sheet. The formula sheet in the very bottom says you're going to go to stat, proportion stats, one sample. All right, so here I go. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to stat, proportion stats, one sample. Now this has a summary of data. We don't have a whole list of data. We just get the summary, the 163 out of 940. So that's what I'm going to do. So number of successes, that's the 163. There were 940 observations. Uh, what's this? This is uh, my null, 1.5. Make sure this gets pointed the right way, greater than. 
and there we go um, and I don't need to store the other stuff and I can just simply hit compute and there it does uh, it works it out for me it even gives me standard error uh, gives me my Z statistic or my test statistic and my p-value so uh, 2.0095 so if I round that to three decimal places that would be 2.010 so if I work that out 2.010 what's the p-value the p-value is 0.022 and now just to kind of make this all make sense this is my test statistic which is associated with um, this p hat from my sample and so if I throw that on here 2.010 that's roughly where just after 2 so there's my test statistic. So where did we land? We landed in the rejection region. Uh, so we're going to reject the null. Now, we don't say, look at my picture. Look, I'm in the rejection region. Remember, we always make this decision by comparing P to alpha. Well, P is 0 0.022. Alpha is 0 0.05. And so what do you get? This is definitely less than. And the easiest way I like to remember this is when you're comparing P to alpha, I like to use the phrase, if the P is low, the null has got to go. In other words, if P is lower than alpha, you need to reject the null hypothesis. So since P is less than alpha, we will reject the null hypothesis. And that's good because our claim was actually in the alternative. So if we are rejecting the null, that means we are supporting the claim. All right. So let's go back over to uh, over to the homework problem. This is what I would do all on paper if it was me. And now having done all this, I can just jump right back into my homework. And this is a piece of cake. Uh, so let's uh, put them in here now. Uh, what's my test statistic? Uh, let's see, 2.0, well, around to two decimal places. I guess if I was going off of this, yeah, it'd still be 2.01. So we'll put in 2.01. Great job. What's the p-value? Round to three decimal places, 0 0.022, I believe is what it was. Uh, what's the conclusion? Uh, remember, we rejected the null and therefore supported the claim, so there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. And I got that. Um, is the conclusion valid? Why or why not? Yes, the conclusion valid today because of course. Yeah, so this is a little more up in the air kind of follow up. You know, uh, you notice this is a 1997 survey data that is kind of old. Um, so, you know, uh, I would tend to lean towards B, actually. Um, this is something that's changing. That's kind of old data. Um, so I would go with that. Let's see what it says here. And it agrees as well. Um, and so that's just sort of recognition of that specific problem. But anyhow, so there it is, start to finish, uh, a problem about a proportion with a hypothesis. Uh, we did all our steps in StatCrunch, uh, did some nice work, showed all my work here. Um, so those are the things you want to do. That's how you kind of run through it through StatCrunch. Uh, I hope that helped you out.